If you have a parallel circuit involving an inductor and a capacitor, and you have an AC voltage input, it's useful to be able to find the equivalent impedance of these two um, reactive elements in parallel. So for an inductor, the impedance is simply J omega L, where omega is 2 pi F. F is the frequency of your AC signal. Now, because this is um, complex, it's imaginary, we can convert that into um, polar. So if you've got your real axis and your imaginary axis, J omega L will be in the vertical direction on the imaginary axis. So we can write it as omega L with an argument, an angle of 90 degrees. So anything in the positive J direction has an argument of 90 degrees or pi over two radians. <clears throat> now, for the capacitor, it's very similar, but the reactance or the uh, inductance is one over J omega C. So the, so that's in rectangular coordinates, in polar coordinates, one over J would be a negative J, so that would be in the negative imaginary axis. So the angle would be minus 90, so we could write this as 1 over omega c with an angle of negative 90 because of the 1 over j, which is negative j. <clears throat> so 1 over j is equal to negative j. So that's how we find these um, in the rectangular and polar representations. Now, to calculate the equivalent parallel impedances, you would simply take the sum of the reciprocals of the impedances. So the reciprocal of an impedance is called an admittance, so it's the sum of the admittances. But let's just use impedance for now. So 1 over ZL, so it's 1 over this plus 1 over that. So you've got our polar representations from here and here. And we can actually rewrite that using J, using our rectangular representation so that you can add. So addition is always easier in rectangular. So this step isn't really helpful. I can now take J as a common factor and then rewrite it as a reciprocal. And then I can rewrite that into polar form and it'll look like that because negative J always results in a negative 90 phase. And that is simply that. So this is my equivalent impedance, so my Z parallel. So this is the equivalent impedance of a parallel LC circuit. Now in this particular example, we're given some numbers um, and we can plug those in to find the value of ZL in rectangular and polar coordinates. We can do the same for ZC in rectangular and polar coordinates. And then we can put both of those into the equation that we just derived. And that will give us this. And we can rewrite that either in polar or in rectangular form. So remember, minus 90 is <coughs> negative j. So the negative j will always give you a 
negative 90. So when you have L and C in parallel, you always have something that's imaginary with the phase angle of minus 90 or minus pi over 2. And the magnitude, in this case, it's 100, and it's just um, 1 over omega C minus 1 over omega L. So I hope you found that helpful.